Welcome to another video. Today I'm going to discuss mental health, the various disorders, how everything relates, doesn't relate. Um, and, you know, when I started making these videos, my idea was um, I was going to do everything in one take. And so far, this is like my fifth take. So, this is my last take on this. If I fuck it up, I'm, you know, I just fucked it up. Anyways, so when I used to post on various forums, um, it seemed like there was a lot of confusion with mental health and, you know, the various disorders and how everything fit together. And so let me explain this first. Mental health is basically an umbrella term that covers pretty much anything that has to do with uh, well, mental health and the various disorders have anxiety disorders that fall under the mental health umbrella. Things like generalized anxiety disorder, um, obsessive compulsive disorder. Um, then you have things like mood disorders that affect your affect. Um, so if you're normally a happy person, you might be sad or you know, lethargic and a lot of fatigue. Um, suicidal or suicidal ideation. Um, mood disorders would be things like uh, major depression, clinical depression, um, bipolar. And then you have things that are the personality disorders, um, also under the mental health umbrella. Those would be things like me, uh, borderline personality disorder, but you also have antisocial personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder, schizoid personality disorder, and there's a few others. With anxiety disorders and mood disorders, oftentimes, oftentimes those can be treated with medications and relatively successfully. So I have generalized anxiety. I take Clonopin for that, but there's also Ativan and a few other drugs that you can take. Um, I also have major depression. Um, for that I take, uh, currently I'm taking Prozac, but there's several others. Uh, Effexor, Zoloft, Paxil, Wellbutrin, um, and it seems like they're constantly coming out with a new uh, antidepressant. And then you have things like personality disorders, and those are more complicated because those can't be treated with medications. Um, you know, they're, they're dysfunctional traits that are developed in childhood or adolescence. Um, in, that are developed in ways to deal with, in effective ways to deal with trauma. And I do not believe that uh, a person is born with a personality disorder. I believe it's something that um, is developed. You know, there's some traumatic incident or various traumatic incidents that occur in, in childhood that where, where they begin to manifest. And it's just a way to deal with um, the stress, the trauma, um, and they're not effective. And so with a mentally healthy person, um, they grow up in childhood and they develop normal or healthy traits. And um, as those traits continue to develop into them, as they get older, they learn to deal with conflict and stress and um, various other issues that involve people and they can deal with that in a healthy, um, effective way. It's part of who they are. Pers personality disorders, that is part of who I am. Um, I grew up, I experienced trauma, um, I learned dysfunctional ways in which to cope with that. And so like a normal or a healthy minded person has their normal traits.
create some ways to deal with uh, stress and conflict and that is a part of them um, my dysfunctional traits are a part of me and that is what comes naturally and so there is no medication that I can take that's magically going to change my personality and give me um, healthy coping skills so it's kind of like uh, you know if I suck at basketball I can't go to a doctor and take a pill and all of a sudden be good at basketball it just takes practice um, <clears throat> so there is no medication that is going to fix a personality disorder now many of us with personality disorders do take medications but those are for overlapping symptoms or comorbid, comorbid um, disorders uh, so like with me I have generalized anxiety I take uh, clonopin for that I have major depression I take Prozac for that and <coughs> excuse me and you'll see that with uh, a lot of people with personality disorders where they have secondary conditions such as depression or bipolar anxiety issues post-traumatic stress disorder and my personal belief is that these people with borderline personality disorders they all we all have um, to some level of degree post-traumatic stress disorder um, some more severe than others I would say I'm lower on the scale um, so I'm trying to think where I want to go with this I guess with with me I guess I'll talk about my childhood briefly um, but I guess I can uh, go back I remember feeling and liking myself probably up through maybe the sixth grade and there was a lot of conflict between my mom and dad as I was growing up and they were divorced and I can remember seemed like prior to seventh grade um, the conflict was normally initiated by my mom towards my dad and um, he had kind of moved on with his life got remarried and my mom hadn't and right around seventh grade it seemed like my mom moved on with her life got over it moved on with her life and all that conflict and turmoil um, it's like I took over so um, where she left off I picked up and I think for me that is part of where my um, dysfunctional traits developed I was basically dealing with adult issues and I wasn't equipped to deal with adult issues and I think for me spending so much time and energy on that I think I lost out on some of my adolescence and how to learn more functional constructive traits and I guess there's other things that I can remember that make me feel worthless I, I can still remember I was really depressed uh, probably around 10th or 11th grade and uh, you know, I can remember meeting a, a friend and he was popular and I can I can remember this as clear as day we met at McDonald's and um, you know I'd asked him if uh, you know if he could let me into his group you know so I could feel included and his basic response was to me that he had enough friends and there pretty much wasn't room for me and I guess other things that you know seem stupid but affect me and you know it just seems like all the friendships that I've had in the past more so during adolescence and my early 20s it seems like every friendship I'm the one that's had to maintain it and even with my dad you know it was me and I guess there's a part you know the other thing is 
you know, I was never told that I was loved. I, I can remember being, I don't know, probably in fourth or fifth grade and I had to ask my mom, you know, why she never told me that she loved me. And so for me, I think that's where my dysfunctional traits all developed. And I can look back and I can see the borderline traits developing in me as far back as probably seventh grade, definitely eighth grade. And um, so there is no medication that can um, treat a personality disorder that's going to make one go from dysfunctional traits to more healthy functional traits. It takes therapy. And the most uh, common therapy for pers uh, borderline personality disorder is DBT or dialectical behavior therapy, which is shown to be relatively effective. Um, that came out probably in the early 2000s. Um, it's the most common treatment that you'll find, although it's still hard um, to get into. Generally, if you can, I live in a relatively large city and I had to be placed on a waiting list before um, I can get into it and that's pretty common standard. Most people it seems like have to be placed on a waiting list before they can get into it. The other, you know, it, it hasn't cured me um, and, and there's reasons for that and maybe I'll get into that in another video. But the other problem with it, it's expensive and a lot of times insurance companies don't pay for it. Uh, for me, there was a weekly group which cost $50, so right there is $200 a month. But you also, <clears throat> um, it, it's also recommended that you get a, uh, a DBT therapist, so that would have been additional. Um, which if you can afford it, it's great because generally you'll have somebody available around the clock um, to to assist if you need help practicing your uh, skills that, that you're learning. Um, so if you can afford it, it's great, but you know, just the group for me was $200 a month and the program is recommended for at least a year. Um, so that has, that is a, a relatively effective therapy. My advice for that is it is not a quick cure. Um, it may not cure everything or fix everything, but people need to realize before you consider taking dialectical behavior therapy or if you choose to take it, that takes work. There's homework. Um, you know, I can take this class and all of a sudden be cured of all these dysfunctional traits. It takes a lot of practice and a lot of work and um, because basically you're changing all these dysfunctional traits and you're trying to learn new coping mechanisms to handle things in a functional way. And the, the ultimate goal is to integrate these new skills into your life to where they're common and you don't have to think about them. Um, but it's unfortunate that a lot of insurance companies um, don't cover DBT because it's a uh, it's probably the most effective treatment for uh, borderline personality disorder. Um, I do have a link if you want to read about DBT. It's in the comment uh, the uh, so, uh, description section. It's uh, dbtselfhelp.com. Um, it's a great website. It's free. It's the complete DBT course online. Um, anyways, I think I covered what I have to say. Um, so please rate, subscribe, uh, recommend the video, leave comments. If there's something you want me to discuss, um, ask your questions. I'll be more than happy to address it. Um, if you ever want a shout out or anything like that, let me know. Um, Anyways, I'd like to see the subscribers increase and it makes doing these videos more fun. And so anyways, that's it for now and I'll talk to you later.